Snus drunk. A while back, I looked at Liberty or Death for Super Nintendo, a PC port from Koei, as part of their historical simulation series, so let's keep going with PTO. And despite the title, this is not a game about strategizing how to use your paid time off at your place of employment. Instead, it stands for Pacific Theater of Operations. Again, this was originally released for PC systems like the MSX2, the FM Towns, the PC8801 and 9801, the X68000, and then it got ports to the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo in late 1992. Like most Koei games, you can choose one side or the other, with the game supporting up to two players, this time being able to choose between the Japanese or the Allied forces, battling over the Pacific, and taking the role of a naval commander controlling as many as 16 fleets, and it's up to you to navigate your way to victory, and of course, since this is a Koei game, you do that by navigating through an insane amount of menus and options broken down into granular detail. You start with a list of scenarios to choose from, eight of them based on real battles, and you start at one to play through all nine in sequence. Next, you're met with another list of stuff, and yup, we're back into the exciting world of budgeting. After that, you set your officer's abilities ranging from bravery, experience, and their skill in sea, land, or air tactics. Then you supply your fleets with fuel, soldiers, and artillery, and you're off and running. Or more like off and, uh, sitting, waiting, crawling, and wondering what you're supposed to do. Thankfully, the manual actually gives you a walkthrough example of how the game works. Just select Scenario 1, pick the lowest difficulty, max out as much as you can on the budget, and get to the military conference. Feel the excitement as you sit at a long table with a bunch of old dudes. Next, you reject the proposal, select one of the other three options available, then you supply your fleets with planes, soldiers, and fuel, and you depart from the port, navigate your way around until you engage in battle. Use guns to attack enemy planes, torpedoes to attack enemy ships, and bombs for land targets. The manual actually has a flowchart to help guide you through this, and it features a lot more details on best practices, so in other words, as you might expect, this is the opposite of a pick-up-and-play game. It's a pick-up-and-be-really-confused for about two hours before you either lose patience or you're intrigued enough to learn what's going on. Thankfully, once you get into the flow of the game and begin to understand how things work, PTO is an okay game. One thing that's really cool is the way the scenarios kind of blend from one to the next, so you're not constantly starting from scratch, so that's nice. The thing is, the pace of this game is really, really slow, and it's easy to find yourself drowning from the sheer amount of options you have available to you. Eventually, you have to deal with weather, base armaments, port commands, generating resources, disgruntled and tired soldiers, sending bombers and warships out to cripple enemy operations, you get requests from assistance from other countries, and you gotta decide if it's in your best interest or not to help them, so you got a political slant to things in addition to all the tactical stuff, so yeah. Despite this port being made in 19 1992, it's still so much stuff. A seriously impressive amount of detail, for better or for worse. This is a classic case of a game being very good for what it is for the time it was released, so it's very similar to other Koei games in that sense. The combat is very similar, the icons and menu system are all structured pretty much the same way, but PTO does seem to go a little above and beyond. You could sink a ton of time into this one and still occasionally discover something new. If you played this back in the day, I don't blame you if you really enjoyed this game at the time despite the limited graphics and music, because for a 1992 SNES game, you absolutely get your money's worth for the amount of gameplay here. However, if you want to play it today for the first time, just be prepared for a lot of reading and a lot of dithering around figuring out what to do. But in my opinion, if you're going to invest the time in a steep learning curve with a game like this, then I would recommend... Pacific Theater of Operations 2, or PTO2, also made by Koei for PC systems, before getting ported to the Sega Saturn and Super Nintendo in late 1995. And the reason I'd recommend this game over its predecessor is very simple. It's the same theme and settings, but it cuts a slightly quicker pace, the menus are a little more intuitive, and the battles are much more engaging and feature way better graphics and sound. I mean, you actually get to see planes bomb stuff. And it keeps all the tactical details from the first game while adding even more. Oh jeez, so much more. Like now, as the Japanese, you can invade North America through the Panama Canal if you want. You also have new technology like decryption units, you can design and customize your own ships, and maybe most importantly, the computer AI is actually somewhat clever. In early Koei games, it can be pretty easy to cheese battles, but in PTO2, not so much. This game gets really hard, really quickly. 
I think PTO2 might be the most Koei game out of any on the Super Nintendo, if that makes sense. They crammed so much into this game it's insane. The basic gist is still managing resources and moving units around and stuff, but you've got individual officers that may have battalions or warplanes. You gotta keep up on what technology they're using, which itself is split into five different parts ranging from espionage, aeronautics, naval resources, weaponry, and industry. You gotta worry about storing resources so they don't get blown up. There's spy missions you have to arrange. There's monthly conferences where you play a card game to try and negotiate with other countries, which makes things even more confusing. This is all to say that the learning curve here is incredibly steep, and my hat goes off to anyone who has taken the time to master this game. So yeah, to be completely upfront, I can't provide much of a preview of games like PTO or PTO2 because they are as in-depth as 16-bit games can possibly get, especially the second game. It would take me a forever and a day just to even set up an example of how these games ultimately play. It's like trying to break down a 20-minute progressive rock song piece by piece, and when you're better off just listening to it yourself. And all I can ultimately do here is just try and set your expectations. That's definitely not to say that they're bad games, they're just exhausting. They're very cleverly put together, but everything is just so incredibly meticulous and comprehensive, but still confusing, and you're going to be consulting the manual or game facts every few minutes. These are games that you really have to immerse yourself into just to get a sense of how many plates you have to keep spinning at once, and to be honest, it feels kind of weird saying that about a Super Nintendo game of all things, and that's all to the game's credit. If you want to overdose on Koei-style gameplay, and if you don't mind barely keeping your head above water as you try and keep from drowning from all the questions, decisions, icons, menus, units, and god knows what else, then PTO2 is the way to go. It's seriously one of the most impressive games on the Super Nintendo, just for the amount of stuff it has to offer, but it is definitely not for everyone. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.